Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be trying to write like William Shakespeare, aka the Bard, which is a wonderful nickname. I even bought a feather quill pen to, you know, just really lean into it. But unlike other writer's routines I've tried in the past, where I gather a plethora of information from a lot of different sources, their website, old interviews, articles, Shakespeare's routine is something of a mystery. For someone as prolific as he is, not a lot is known about his writing routine outside of he wrote a lot all the time and everywhere. So I'm gonna be relying on one particular resource, the BBC. It's BBC Teach and it's definitely meant for like younger children, but I still thought it was quite fun and it's a really hard routine. Any routine that requires me to wake up at 4.45 a.m. and still be writing by 10 p.m. is a hard routine in my book. But before I get into exactly what Shakespeare's routine is, I do wanna ask you guys when you hear the name William Shakespeare, what immediately springs to mind? Is it a Shakespearean word? Is it one of his works? Is it a particular memory you have of being forced to read his stuff in high school <laughs> or middle school? Comment down below, let me know. Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet are some of the first that spring to my mind, but A Midsummer Night's Dream is actually one of the few works that I was forced to read in high school that I actually completed and I think of it pretty fondly. Now, not that Shakespeare needs it, but let's go ahead and put some respect on his name. He wrote over 37 plays, the actual number is debated, 144-ish sonnets, and then a couple other long, short form poems. The man was prolific to the point that it's contested by some. Whether all of the works are genuinely his, I'm kind of of the camp that maybe, you know, he workshopped it with a couple friends sometimes. <laughs> but without further ado, let's talk about Shakespeare's writing routine according to the BBC. Shakespeare awoke at 4.45 a.m. supposedly. <laughs> they talk about him being a literary commuter, writing and traveling when his work required him to, but he got up so early so that at 5 a.m. he could start writing with the morning light. They do include <laughs> a bathroom trip, at 6 a.m. and explain a little bit more about that. This is where you can really see the BBC teach aspect coming into play. But then at 7 it's breakfast time where most people drank small beer because it was safer than water. 8 a.m. was a weary walk and then at 9 a.m. he was back to work which he continued through 1 p.m. when he breaked for lunch. At 2 30 he would go farming but really more kind of look over the land that he owned at a certain period in his life. 3 30 he walked through the garden. I do think it's really interesting the amount of walking that is featured in a lot of novels in that time, but also just in the daily life of people who lived back then, which I mean, I do love a good walk. Then at five, it was time for business and beer. I'd argue that farming also falls under that sort of business category. So he's really staying busy all day. 6 p.m. was dinner time with the family where they would also play games and just generally hang out and enjoy each other's company. Then at 10 p.m. he would start writing again. The BBC theorizes that he sort of split his work into like morning day-ish work and then focused on his sonnets at night. And then at some point, I suppose it's bedtime and you repeat the process, it kind of leaves off there, don't know when he goes to bed, but he gets up at 4.45 a.m. So that's all that's left for me to do is also get up at 4.45 a.m. Time to write like William Shakespeare. So he starts working at five and it's supposed to be like a natural light thing, but it is still very dark here and we'll see be very dark for several more hours so I also realized as I was setting up that what I wanted to do was to write on the couch but if I was gonna use my quill that that would not work Okay, so now that it is almost six. Rather than spending an hour going to the bathroom, walking to get to the bathroom, I am going to spend the time attempting to get the uh, ink off of my hands and I'll come back to write a little bit more before breakfast. Breakfast with beer. Yes. Okay. I tried putting more light on, but I might have to do another because it is seven o'clock breakfast time, but the sun is still not up yet. <laughs> Nowhere close. I have my Ego Great and my beer, 
which it was often healthier back then to drink beer rather than water of course the beer was like very diluted almost more like mead maybe so i will be drinking one beer because i wanted to say I drink beer in the morning but otherwise i shall also have water breakfast of champions oh yeah <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think beer was a bad idea, but we might finally be. Somewhat of the morning light. I think I can get away with it. I'm gonna try and write a little bit more with the morning light since I didn't quite get that effect earlier. And then it'll be almost time to go on my walk. Still a mistake. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Wait. Good. Good job, girls. Do you like pizza? Right, it's like 52 degrees outside right now, but it feels really good. It is interesting because the last couple times uh, I've been out on a walk, I've mostly been just listening to audiobooks and stuff. And while I love that because I get some reading in, it's been nice to just have my own thoughts. And just kind of listening for the sounds, taking stuff in. I forgot how much louder cars were than like the normal out and about stuff. But uh, as my reward for getting about a fifth or a quarter of the way through my nano project, I'm letting myself flesh out a mystery idea I had, a thriller idea. So I'm basically, as long as I get my nano words, I'm allowed a day to do it. Also, I figured this would be easier with the Shakespeare writing experiment to kind of get a couple of scenes done from different um, characters' point of views rather than writing and then trying to put it back into Scrivener later. Also, I did not manage to get all the ink off my hands. It's just more faded now. <laughs> but at least my nails are pretty. I don't want to encourage this, but also it's adorable. Oh, okay. Hey. Not what I should have done, I see. So, I have to put that there because I do not trust myself. <laughs> After a little bit of thinking on both my walk and in the shower, I think I have enough to start the opening scene. This is gonna be a closed circle mystery. And so it was more which character do we want to open the story with and follow to the to the location, right? Um, or at least part of the location. <laughs> I was thinking over a couple options. Do you want to follow the murderer? We could follow the first victim. We could follow someone who's going to make it pretty far, but then ultimately die. So I was just trying to think over what would be the most interesting from a reader standpoint. And I think I got it. Um, I'm between two, but I think I got it. So, oh, I see now that I started at the back. This is not the first time I've done this. What is wrong with me and not knowing how, like, where a notebook is? It says it there. Did I start like this, like a normal person? No. <laughs> I have no excuses except that it was five in the morning and I was a little bit distracted by the quill. <laughs> Besides the fact that I did not get what I, <laughs> that it felt weird on the very end of the notebook, I also didn't get the right word I wanted until the end. So this is gonna be the one thing that, uh, you can see I had to add little notes up top that I forget about. 
That's always my thing with handwriting, especially like some of these things where this changes, um, I said her best friend and I said an old friend. I feel like with mysteries or thrillers, like the kind that I'm trying to write, you go in kind of expecting something. So you're looking for any hints really early on or that you being the reader, which means that anything I can do to like kind of increase that is helpful. Best friend isn't as curious as an old friend or an ex friend, maybe. And you know, there's just a couple other things where I'm trying to up the intrigue or that would potentially act as a clue in the future. Um, so anyways. Ta -da. Also, while I don't think that this is like, you know, the nicest pin or anything, right? Like it's not the fanciest pin, but for the like, I don't know, 13 bucks I paid for this, shockingly fun, shockingly fun. <laughs> Further proof the morning beer was a mistake. <laughs> All right, so I have been writing since nine, basically after I finished my vlog and then took a shower, but I do have a Twitch stream. So here's how I'm working this in. <laughs> I'm not gonna type anything up. I'm gonna try and stick with the quill, but I am gonna do the stream and as it's Friday, we do the D100 to determine our sprints. Now, William Shakespeare wrote with a lot of people. He co-wrote a lot of things. Some of his friends edited or revised his work. Sometimes it was like a joint effort. And so that's how I'm going to try and take this. We're co-working together. We're encouraging each other. But it is now 10 to one and I've talked too long. And it is time for the stream. <laughs> So normally at this time of day, supposedly, William Shakespeare would be farming or looking over his farm. I shall jaunt outside as I give you an update, but alas, not a whole lot of farmland going on here. <laughs> so instead, I did some like work adjacent activities, chat with my brother, which is being recorded and processed right now for a project. But other resources said that William Shakespeare basically wrote anywhere, not just at home, whether he was like traveling on a ship or in a different city or wherever he was writing wherever he went. And it's interesting because of course now we have laptops or we can text part of our stories to ourselves on our phone or we can use voice to text and stuff. There's a lot of ways, a lot more ways to write on the go now. And I'm finding that the constant sort of like hunched over in one position with the quill or the uh, drip pen, especially because I'm right-handed. And so rather than the typing kind of being even in using both hands. I'm really only using one, so I'm finding myself hunched over in a very particular way. And because the ink needs to be sat somewhere near-ish me, it's not like I can write on the couch in the same way that I'm used to. So anyways, much credit where credit is due. My poor posture cannot handle this. <laughs> now it is time for walk part two. And now it is time for business and more beer. <laughs> I'll say though, getting up at 4.45, I'm already a little bit tired. Like, I don't know for those who wear contacts, I can feel it in my eyes kind of thing. But for this next portion, I'm actually going to use my computer because I got to send some emails and stuff. I do think it's interesting that I'm sort of, you know, people are guessing at his writing routine. This isn't exactly his writing routine because he, he didn't document it. And it's just interesting now, especially like we're on AuthorTube other or YouTube or just like places where people document the process of making something and then actually show, you know, the thing they made or whatever else. It's just crazy to have almost a surplus of that. Like at this point, some of y'all know too much about my writing routine potentially, which I think is wonderful in a lot of respects because now you can like, there's a less feeling of being alone in doing this thing. Like when I was a kid searching up message boards and just trying to see if there were other writers and where they might be and not having any that like you can meet up with or hang out with or whatever. So I do think it would be kind of funny if Shakespeare existed today. What 
how different that would look. It's also worth pointing out how different, you know, stories are told nowadays. Back then, the oral history and plays and watching it unfold in front of you, there was a lot more interaction. And while we still have Broadway and local productions and all sorts of other things, even though there are still playwrights, you know, the way we share stories is different. And I think that um, like Haley Haggerty, she writes plays alongside her novels and other stuff. But when I talk with other writers, whether it's in person or online, oftentimes, you know, if they're not writing novels, which is the most popular um, answer, maybe they're writing a screenplay or they're writing poetry. It just feels to me like the the playwriting has fallen to the side a little bit. Micah Vidal also is someone who writes uh, musicals and stuff like that, which I just think is so cool. <sighs> All right. Let's do this. <laughs> I have tried both this beer and the one I had my breakfast beer in the past and I found that I like them both. However, this one is going down so much more smoothly. <laughs> breakfast beer was a mistake. I'm sure everyone else knew it was a mistake, but alas. It is now. 10, 19 p.m. Now, not only did William Shakespeare write plays, but he wrote sonnets and poems as well. And that's what he would switch to at 10, which again, I am like dumbfounded at how this man got up at 4 to 45 or whatever, and was still able to write by 10. But I am going to switch projects. So let me bring you down here. I'm sticking with the quill. I don't know how much I have in me, but I figure at least a little bit at the start. Wow, how many pages did I write today? Fourteen, at least. And then the uh, outlining notes from earlier. Dang, okay. Crushed it. <laughs> and I'm actually going to switch to romance. So it'll be a fun change from the mystery project. Alright, so that is the end of my William Shakespeare writing experiment. I had a lot of fun with it. I will say I had more fun at about like 7 a.m. Uh, and then also when I finished the morning beer, which was a bad idea. <laughs> Altogether, this was at least five hours of writing work intermixed with other work, the farming work and the actual sit down business with other people. So a busy day. I was frankly exhausted by the end of it. When I was at 10 p.m. and I was starting to write again, I did not get very far. I got about two pages and then I could just feel my eyes shutting and my head sort of nodding and I was like, <sighs> props to Shakespeare, props to BBC's teaches version of Shakespeare. Because <laughs> man oh man, that was tough. It was really fun. There's something really rewarding in putting in a lot of mentally taxing work, but I do find it quite exhausting. That said, I did figure out a huge aha for where to start the story. I actually probably finished either the first chapter or the prologue. As someone who does not like prologues, I'll probably make it chapter one, but <laughs> it feels sort of prologue-ish. I got it all figured out. So we actually saw four people receiving the summons, the letter, uh, because of course that's one of my favorite tropes is that you get a mysterious letter and you're like, ooh, where am I going? <laughs> Do I go? Hmm. So anyways, it was such a blast to get to write that. It was such a nice reward to break from my NaNoWriMo project for hitting a milestone. So this was just all together a really fun experience, even if it was not necessarily one that I would repeat. If I'm getting up at 4.45 a.m., there is no way I'm still writing by 10 p.m. It's just not gonna happen. The few times that has happened have been like 24 hour write a and you know how much I regret those. <laughs> not regret, I suppose, but, but shake my head at myself. Just why? But that's gonna be it for me. Please do comment down below. Let me know what you think of Shakespeare's routine. Let me know a particular Shakespeare work that you think might be underappreciated. Let me know if you've somehow escaped 
reading or watching anything by William Shakespeare. And let me know who you think I should try writing like next. But thank you guys so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Katrina Marie, Angelica Anderson, Kay, Tessa Rosenberg, and Corey Padgett Bikowski. And we'll see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Do I have any more marks on my face now? Ooh, that's a little bit too much light coming in. I'll have to turn that down. Wow, this, these bangs are too long.